Listen, what happened with Mosley is a few months ago when he knocked out Margarito, who was one of the most feared punchers at 147, and knocked who, him... Who everybody avoided, Yeah, right? And he knocked him out decisively. He yeah. just destroyed him for nine rounds. No, people don't. First of all, he's up there in age. He's not that big of a draw, so it's not very attractive for people to fight Sugar Shane Mosley because it's a hard fight and it's not that much of a money maker as opposed to, uh, let's say, Manny Pacquiao versus uh, Floyd Mayweather. Could be the only fight after that. Uh, it's highly there, likely there's that still he some, will retire. No, right? there's, there's, no, there's, no I, I, I disagree. There's still some big fights out there for him. I think Cotto is a is a fight that uh, could. That generates some Assuming buzz. Generate some wins. buzz. Yeah, yeah but I, I'm saying that's a fight that could be interesting if uh, if the Pacquiao fight doesn't come around. There's also uh, Paul Williams. Yeah, Paul Williams who's, who's an up and comer. Every uh, he can go up and down in every category. That's, well, that's uh, remarkable. Uh, I, and I, I asked you uh, as a novice uh, boxing fan. I asked you at what point do we start ma- uh, mentioning Floyd Mayweather Jr. As one of the greatest pound for pound boxers of all time, he's, he's already up he's there. He's in the top. I, I say he's there. He, he's he's already up there. He's had a defining career. He blew out Arturo Gatti. He blew out Corrales back in the day, and he made it look easy. It wasn't uh, Floyd Mayweather's never been challenged. Even the split decision against Oscar De La Hoya. If you watched, first of all, he came in at 154 at that fight. He walks around at 150. Like he was really going up in weight. You know, Oscar refused to fight him, and he had to put the bigger gloves. They signed the contract that with 10 ounce gloves rather than 8 ounce gloves. Like everything was stacked in Oscar's favor, and Floyd still won, even though it was a split decision. If you really watch the fight, it was, it, it was a fight. unanimous decision. Floyd, his defense is too good. He doesn't get hit. He's he's and, 40 fights. It looks as if he's never had a. fight. Is there somebody out there that may be it's, dangerous? Like if, he, if Paul he, Williams is the only guy who can uh, actually bang with uh, with Floyd, uh, he has enough power that he can um, he can do a little bit of a dent. But I still I don't st- I still don't see it. The I, only guy that I like in this division, and a lot of people he got robbed in my opinion, and a lot of people say that was Emmanuel Clotty when he fought um, Josh when he fought Miguel Cotto. Emmanuel Clotty is one of the purest boxers out there. He's got defense, he's got offense. I personally think he he beat Cotto, but Bob Arum, uh, you know, he controls uh, what's going on, and he, there was too much money uh, on the line. That's why he wanted to see eventually the Manny Pacquiao and Cotto fight. He's going to make money with that, and eventually whoever wins will fight Mayweather, and he's going to make again more money. When you look at uh, Floyd Mayweather's career, Simon, uh, it, it's going to be uh, defined by what he does in the next uh, uh, four or five uh, last fights. And the reason I say that is because uh, his quality of opponents – is much like Roy Jones Jr. in the beginning of his career. He dominated Roy Jones Jr. You have to understand Mayweather has dominated even more because he's done it in four or five different weight classes. However, he doesn't have that defining moment. Oscar De La Hoya fought everybody, and that's what's made him a fan favorite. Now, what he needs to do is take the Pacquiao fight and take whoever else is there. Ranked on top, and that will define Mayweather as the greatest of all time, or one of the greatest. Until he does that, he'll be in the conversation for what he has accomplished. But I don't think you can put him up there with the greatest of all time until his up- level of opponents has been raised. Well, it's interesting because the truth is, as as a boxing analyst and someone who knows and loves the sport, I'm telling you, the Pacquiao fight will not even be competitive. For May- a few rounds, a few May- Mayweather will destroy. I agree. I, I agree with Mayweather, you guys. First of all. Freddie Roach, Manny Pacquiao's trainer, will never let that fight happen. He handpicks the opponents. He knew Oscar couldn't go down to that weight. He used to train Oscar. He knew that Manny had that fight in the bag before they even before the first bell even rang. Yeah, Oscar, but Freddie Roach has no choice. Eventually, the the fan is. Uh, I think know, they're demanding so much the fight. Money. Yeah. It's going to come There's in. A lot of money, but the problem is, uh, and the fight he, is, will happen. Bob Arum, who's the promoter of Manny Pacquiao and Miguel Cotto, for that matter, used to be Floyd Mayweather's promoter, and they have big uh, problems. Like they don't want to work together, Floyd, and they both want a big cut of the money. That's a problem in boxing. Both right. fighters want at least sixty, seventy percent. Who's willing to budge? Is the fight going to be made? Right, but the guys from Golden Boy Promotions, they're going to make the fight happen because they have a lot of dates on HBO, and they control now. Right now, they basically control what's going on in the. With HBO, they have all the dates, they have the control, so it's gonna happen. Too much money. Uh, and speaking of Roy Jones, I just want to make one point. You said that uh, Roy Jones was not as dominating. Uh, I think Roy Jones is one of the greatest fighters I've ever seen. Uh, greatest talent. Sure. He went up. He became champion at 160. There was nobody else he could fight. He went up to 168. 
still uh, no, he beat everybody, and there was still not enough competition. It's not his he fault. He went to 175, became the light heavyweight champion, and then he jumped two classes. He went all the way to heavyweight. Beat uh, John Ruiz. And then beat John Ruiz, who was still a very tough fighter, and then came back down and still regained the, the light heavyweight. There, there's no, First time in there's no doubt, but I mean, you, you look at the greatest fighters of all time, and, and they all have defining moments, right? Whether it, fights, whether, yeah. yeah, whether it be Muhammad Ali, whether it be, uh, uh, Roberto Duran, or Thomas Hearns, or, uh, Sugar, uh, Sugar Robinson, or whoever it may be, they have a defining moment. And that, that's what lacks in Roy Jones. You look at it, what is his biggest win? Is it James Tony? Well, you have Bernard Hopkins, yeah, and no, you have James Tony. But the Hopkins, when Hopkins wasn't Hopkins. Yeah, but that, that's not but, fair to say because Hopkins was 27. Already, they had about a, roughly the same amount of fun. wasn't Hopkins, though. You look, and I'll go back to look at Manny he Pacquiao. Fought him, he fought him with one hand. Sure, right but away. look I at... I just want to say that. Yeah, I, I remember the fight distinctly, but look at Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao's got three or four losses on to his credit, but nothing recent. And the reason for that, he's a different boxer. He's evolved. The way, uh, the way boxers evolve as they get better. The great ones get better. The Hopkins with fight would still be the same result, except that Roy Jones would have two hands. That's the difference. Uh, we got to switch gears for a little, uh, for a moment. Uh, we had a caller earlier in the show wanted to talk about local boxing and uh, Jean Pascal and what you can tell us about uh, this young man and uh, you know lo he's, local golden boy, I guess. <laughs> he's a, go ahead. Carson. He represents Montreal. You know what? He's a great fighter. He's still very young. Eh? He's still 26 years old. He world champion at 175, light heavyweight. He was fighting at 168 pounds, actually, and he, he went for his first title opportunity down to England to fight Carl Frock last year in a very heated... It was actually nominated in the British Sports Awards there mm -hmm. for fight of the year. Okay. And it was a big brawl back and forth. He lost on points. He, he lost the fight, but uh, he learned a lot from it, came back, fought Adrian Diaconu in Montreal at 175 pounds. And he uh, he won decisively, and now he's fighting. It's the mandatory Silvio Branco coming up mm -hmm. uh, this weekend, this Friday. Italian, a, a bit up there in age. They call him the Italian Bernard Hopkins. He's like in his early 40s. And you know what? Honestly, Jean the Italian Bernard Hopkins. Yeah, Jean Pascal is gonna. He has a long way to become Bernard Hopkins. Yeah, Jean Pascal is gonna dominate. What do you think, Alonso? Well. Uh, we've covered the, the press conference with Jean Pascal. Actually, uh, Silvio ju just uh, landed in, on Saturday, and today was the first uh, time they, they met. And I've uh, done interviews with Jean Pascal. Uh, what's great about Jean Pascal is that he's, uh, he's a charismatic. Uh, uh, he, he's, he's good for the sport. He's trying to emulate Roy Jones to a certain degree, but at least he tries to sell it, which a lot of fighters don't. He has a personality, and that's what's lacking in boxing. Uh, there's not that many fighters out there that can actually talk the talk and walk the walk, you know? Uh, I'd like to ask and he you does that. before we go, a couple of things. What could we be looking from uh, www.boxingshow.tv? Uh, What's coming up? Well, basically, we, do a lot, we cover a lot of fights that are in Quebec, and uh, we also uh, work in uh, collaboration with uh, Boxing Talk, uh, which is in New York. So uh, we're doing a lot of um, interviews. We try to cover the fights, and eventually we're going to be streaming live fights on the cards or even main fights. So that's what we're doing right now. And uh, we're just uh, we're going wherever uh, the boxers are. We're, we just follow the, the... The boxers. And don't forget to mention, we also have a weekly show that we do. We uh, broadcast live on the website and also on YouTube under Boxing Show TV. It's just a good... It's a recap show, the big fights of the week, what's coming up, our predictions... Just to mention, I'm nine and zero on predictions. Very good. We can make. Uh, we should months. use you in Vegas. If, I, if <laughs> I was a gambling man, I would have made a few pennies. I ask you uh, one more question, gentlemen. If it happens, the big fight everybody's waiting for uh, Pacquiao and, and Mayweather. I want to put you on record now because we record the show. Uh, I and you your know, nine and zero record is on the line. And your nine and zero record is on the line. If a prediction, I will stake. If it happen, I will stake my record and my reputation. Floyd Mayweather Jr. hands down in a beatdown. Uh, not a, not necessarily a beatdown, but we'll just say he's going to win a decision, because I don't think he'll knock out uh, Manny. Manny's a bit too quick and he's very tough, so it's going to go to a decision. Mayweather at least uh, eight rounds to four. Nice, gentlemen. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it, guys. And, uh, don't we'll... forget. I just want to mention one go thing ahead. on BoxingShow.tv. We do a recap show, ten minutes. It's great. You're going to love it. We talk about all the fights and all the interviews we did with the boxers. And we'll have you back on your other mission. It's been guys. a pleasure, guys. Thanks. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. We got music, Jim, because I don't got my headset on. I'm too lazy. Simon Salikas, George Caparis, Jimmy Garofales. This is the Minister of Sports, Montreal Sports Authority, the I Team 990. When we come back, five questions, highest rated segment here on the Team 990, and uh, all of free radio for that matter. Back in the bit.